to teach you the next lesson in the Kids Club Fruit of the Spirit series. I'm so excited about this one. This one is called gentleness. Boy, that's not a word we hear too often anymore, is it? Gentleness. But it is the eighth fruit of the Spirit. And it's really, really important that we learn all about it. Let's go back to our memory verse and let's read it together. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Don't forget, once you to accept Jesus in your heart, he will expect you to show all of those fruit of the Spirit to everybody at all times. He wants us to be as much like him as we can possibly be. So don't forget, it's going to be something that's not going to be easy, but if you keep practicing and keep trying, you'll get it eventually. Now, gentleness. Today is about gentleness. Let's see. We're told to be gentle with animals, gentle with our toys, gentle with our brothers and sisters. Boy, there's a lot of things that we're supposed to be gentle with so we don't hurt them or we don't break them or anything like that. But we all know we can hurt people's feelings, too, pretty easily if we're not gentle. So I wonder, how can we be gentle with things like words? Let's do a little activity to help us. Now, we're going to pretend this is our heart. And sometimes when we say bad things to people, it's sort of like putting a needle right through their heart. It's hard to see this, but I have a needle here. And that's what it feels like when you say things like, you're mean, or you're ugly, or I don't want to be your friend. That's what it feels like. You say things like, you're stupid and you're fat. Well, those aren't nice words at all, and they make your heart really sad. Matter of fact, it's like putting holes in it every single time. But you know what? A lot of people are still smiling on the outside, even though their heart is breaking. Oh man, that's not good at all. You know, just like that egg, there's nothing we can do to fix a broken heart. We can say we're sorry, and we hope that the person forgives us, but there's only one way for that person's heart to be fixed, and that's with God. God can convince them to forgive us, can make them feel better in so many ways, especially when they have the fruit of the Spirit in them as well. But we want to remember, it's not good to do that. We don't want to break somebody's heart. Think about this for a second. Would you prefer to eat a spoonful of sugar or would you prefer to eat a spoonful of salt? You, you know what they both taste like. I think I'd rather have the sugar. Well, the Bible tells us that we can respond to people so much better if we use the sugar. That's so important. When people are cruel and angry to us, um, if we are gentle back, then we can definitely help them, help them see that we have God inside us. And that is not the way you're supposed to treat somebody. People who say mean things, you're supposed to say kind things back to them to help them heal the hurt that they have. Because clearly, if somebody's saying all these mean things to you and doing mean things to you, they don't have love. They have hurt in their heart. So maybe somebody did that to them before. So the best thing for us to do is to try to help. And how we can do that is by being gentle. Well, you know, this gentleness stuff, thats it's tough. It's tough to figure all out. But the best way to figure it out is to go to the Bible. The Bible has the best stories for us. We've learned so much already with the fruit of the spirits, the spirit that we've already learned about. We've learned so much through the Bible. So today, we're going to go right to Jesus. Jesus has the best story on gentleness. And I think he's the best person ever to teach us about it. This story is about how Jesus stopped a mob of people from throwing stones at a woman. Let's listen. This happened after Jesus had been to the Mount of Olives. Early the next morning, he was back at the temple and he was teaching just like he always was. 
when some of the Pharisees brought a woman who was accused of a bad sin against her husband, and they placed her in front of the crowd and in front of Jesus. The men said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman has committed a really bad sin against her husband, and the law of Moses says we are to stone her. What do you think? Should we stone her? Jesus knew that the men were trying to trap him to say something that they could use against him. So he just kneeled down and he began to write in the dust with his finger. The men kept demanding over and over, give us an answer. What should we do, teacher? Should we stone her? Should we? He finally stood up and he said, very calmly and very gently, he said, all right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he kneeled back down and he started writing in the dust again. When the men heard his response, they started to slip away one by one, beginning with the oldest down to the youngest, until Jesus was the only one left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Jesus stood up and he said, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them throw a stone? Didn't anyone want to accuse you of the sin anymore? The woman said, no, Lord. And Jesus said, neither do I. He told the woman to go and sin Wow, that no was a scary anymore. story. That would have been really scary if that could have happened to that lady. But Jesus, he's so gentle. He didn't get angry with the people. He just taught them a lesson. And it was a good lesson too. Who are we to judge? We make all kinds of mistakes. We sin all the time. So we should never be the first one to throw the stone at somebody else who sins, right? We want to be gentle and, and just be so good with them and just help them, help them through. It's not easy though, and I get that. It's not easy to be gentle all the time. But if we follow Jesus' example, we'll always do the right thing. Gently correct those who do wrong to us and offer them forgiveness. The Bible says that we're to correct those who are caught sinning gently and speak truth through love. We can do this by praying before we talk to people that upset you. So if you have someone that upset you, pray about it before you just spout off to them and start saying things. Really think about what Jesus would want you to do. Well, you might be wondering why you got this jar and all those pom-poms inside. Well, this is going to be what we call our gentleness jar. Now I'm taking out all the pom-poms because we need it to be empty. And what I want you to do is you can make a label for it if you want, you can gentleness jar. There is um, a chalk piece of chalk paper on the top. You can write that on there if you like, but I want you to take this week and every time you or someone in your family does something gentle or shows a gentleness in any way, I want you to take one of the pom-poms and put it in the bowl, I mean in the jar. And every time someone does something gentle, put another pom-pom in. And hopefully after a week is done, you'll have it completely filled up with all of those pom-poms. And you know what? This will be a good reminder. Get it out now and then. If you're feeling like maybe you haven't been being very gentle, maybe you're feeling like you've kind of been a jerk lately to a lot of your friends and family, get that jar back out and fill it up for yourself. Every time you do something gentle, put it in there. That will be a great reminder to you after you have done it for a while, you'll remember to always be gentle. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, Lord, I lift us up to you just for your help. Please help us learn how to be more gentle. Help us to remember that gentleness doesn't always have to do with just our hands, Lord, and how we touch things or pick things up or how we play with things. Gentleness has an awful lot to do with our words. So Lord, help us. Help us to be um, gentle like you want us to be and not say mean words to people and forgive them when they say mean words to us. Lord, this is hard stuff, but we really, really need your help and we know that you're always there for us. Lord, thank you for everything you give us every single day. In your son's holy name. Thanks so Amen. much for tuning in to this lesson on gentleness. I will see you in just a couple weeks 
keep on practicing. Be gentle.